her zero and felt empty? Well, you didn't hear it right, did you? Because the video that you are watching right now comes from a series of zeros and the ones playing roles in an epic action movie. India gave you Shunya or Zero. Team Shunya presents you efficient beyond the literal meaning of the word Daksh in Hindi. We give multiple shades to the word with our brainchild project Daksh. The game is all about where the goal leads to, presenting you the snap of the game. Our site is located in Navi Mumbai, which is the largest planned city in the world. It came up as a satellite city to Mumbai, also known as Bombay. The region falls under the warm and humid climate zone 3A and has the maximum and minimum temperatures of 35 and 15 degrees Celsius respectively. Now let us look at the history and the context of the site. The artist village was developed by Charles Correa for the artisans, as the name suggests, but it had very few takers due to its location. Hence, it was also opened up for the general public. Five typologies of houses were developed, which were added into a cluster of seven houses. These clusters were further multiplied throughout the site to form larger clusters of 21 houses each. As you can see, the image on the left shows the original planning whereas the one on the right shows the most recent development. For the project, it was important to know the stakeholders and hence we conducted a telephonic survey as a physical survey was impossible due to the pandemic. A few common problems that needed to be addressed were lack of parking spaces, vehicles such as ambulances and fire engines not being able to reach the house in case of emergencies, issues of natural lighting and ventilation of nearby houses due to half a side development within the site, issues of flooding and waterlogging during the monsoon. With all the background study and a lot of brainstorming, we came up with the conceptual strategy. The initial idea for planning was to redevelop uh, the compact cluster combating haphazard development and giving the site its lost value back. We catered to this through focus on various key points such as community living, resource sharing in terms of energy generation and utilization, involving the user in the design process through the DIY concept, future provision such as electric car chargers. Due to the cluster level planning of the design, it has a lot of scalabilities. Also, due to the constraint of the site, the design has been kept compact and functional. The site development was done keeping all the above factors in mind. As you can see, this is the water channel that runs through the site. We have arranged all our open spaces around the channel for two reasons. One, to give the channel a good visual access and second, to prevent the nearby houses from flooding during monsoon. Each house is kept accessible on at least two sides by adding roads all around the cluster. This also takes care of the light and ventilation of the surrounding houses. This is the process of the development of the cluster, starting from a plain site of 38 by 40 meters, then looking at the available volume, addition of courtyards as per traditional Indian housing typologies, catering to the parking requirements and considering the visual access, light and ventilation within the cluster. Within the cluster, we have introduced three housing typologies, namely 1BHK, 2BHK and 3BHK, where BHK stands for bedroom, hall and kitchen. The vehicles would be parked from outside the cluster, whereas the pedestrian access would be into the cluster. Ramps have been added on a common plinth to provide access to the elderly. This was the process followed for coming up with individual house design, starting with the massing, the addition of function and offsets based on the user survey, addition of slopes and visual access, and then detailing out the materials and the architectural details. Various passive strategies were used while designing, such as clear story windows to introduce stack effect, Slope on the south side for the solar panels, provision of terrace garden, recessed windows to avoid direct sun rays, bamboo lures for ventilation, and green spaces for adding plants of choice, ceramic cladding for additional insulation. Trees with wider roots have been used for landscaping to prevent soil erosion during the rains. Also, GFRG panels with proper joinery have been used for roofing to withstand the strong winds in case of rare cyclones. To involve the user in the design process, 
we decided to go along with the name Artist Village and read up about various art moments throughout the history. Taking inspiration from these, we further designed a catalog for the user to choose from various options for exterior tile colors, grill and railing options, flooring and elevational patterns to name a few. Here is the plan for a 3 BHK house. On the ground floor, a flexible partition has been added between the living and the dining area in order to accommodate more guests. Also, considering a joint family, a bedroom has been kept on the ground floor which would be used by the grandparents, whereas the upper two rooms could be used by the children and their parents. Now we'll head over to Oves for the structural details. So the skeleton of our building is made using GFRG panels. GFRG stands for glass fiber reinforced gypsum. These panels are used in a design for the construction of wall and roof. These load bearing panels are considered in a design to several advantages over the conventional framing structure like RC and steel buildings. These panels are prefabricated panels which makes the construction a lot faster. These panels are made from 90% recycled materials like waste gypsum and 10% virgin materials and they can be recycled after demolition which makes them an eco-friendly and cheaper option. Use of GFRG panels significantly reduced the amount of cement, sand and bricks which counted for more than 40% reduction in carbon emissions. These panels are cut in the factory according to our requirements and delivered to site. A structural analysis of our GFRG building was performed in ATAP software following the Indian standard codes and the GFRG design manual. As you can see from the table, our design is structurally safe as the peak values are much less than the values of stresses at failure. Earthquake scenarios were also simulated in the ATAP software. Our site which is located in Navi, Mumbai lies in the Bureau of Indian Standards in Seismic Zone 3 and hence is not quite prone to earthquakes. The use of GFRG panels have further provided much needed resilience and weight reduction which ensures the adaptability, flexibility and the resilience which our design can provide to incorporate the natural disaster. Also, for higher seismic zones, the cavities of the GFRG panels can be filled with reinforced concrete which will make them excellent shear walls to withstand the lateral loads. This building has been simulated for the conditions in Zone 5, which is a highly seismically activated zone. And our design can resist earthquakes up to Richter scale 8 with a maximum deflection of 0.38 meters. The choice of materials was purely based on availability and sustainability. Most of the materials used in our design are locally sourced. The interiors are decorated with ply frames, which are eco-friendly materials. The window has a double glazing unit with solar controlled glass with a silver layer which lowers the emissivity and increases the thermal performance of the house. These windows serve as a perfect choice for the inhale conditions. The choice of waterproof and durable materials like veneer flooring, fiber glass door, etc. ensures the safety of the residents and resilience in the calamities. The zero UC paints and the wallpapers ensure better indoor air quality and comfort for the occupants. The air barrier used in our design is a woven and coated polyethylene fabric with micro perforations which is engineered to act as a water resistive barrier, air barrier, moisture protection barrier and weather resistant barrier. The thermal barriers are provided at each building layer to ensure better indoor temperature. Ceramic tiles used for the exterior cladding reduces the impact of UV rays from direct sunlight onto the building. GFRG panel, foam concrete insulation, Phenolic foam insulation and the rock wool insulation also provides a sound barrier which reduces the exterior and neighborhood noises to enter into the building envelope. For improving its energies among buildings, we are using common utility at cluster level. The grid integrated solar PV is installed which will provide electricity to individual houses, a 60 kW centralized chiller plant and to street light of entire cluster. We are using 3 hours for water conservation that is reduce, recycle and renewable which are explained in further slides. This slide shows the water supply lines and fixtures layout at house level. The best efficient water fixtures are used based on illust uniform illustrated plumbing code India to reduce water consumption. The average rainfall for of the location is 1915 mm and approximately 16 lakh liters of annual rainfall runoff from the entire cluster. Thus, rainwater harvesting is a good renewable source for our location. Two underground storage tanks are placed to store rooftop rainwater. This water can be used for various purposes. 
grey water recycling is performed using gel cyborg solution. The grey water recycling tanks are shared among two adjacent houses. This recycled water can satisfy the need of flushing and plants. Thus, with the use of such efficient fixtures and grey water recycling, the water consumption is reduced to 42% for the entire cluster. The layout, this layout shows the position of supply and return tank and water supply lines. The energy needed for heating the water is tapped from centralized HVAC. We have used a looped hot water system which reduces the wait time and water losses. The ventilation requirement is calculated as per ASRA 62.2 2019 version. For enhancing natural ventilation effect, the passive strategy of a stack effect is used along with respond ventilation technique. Ceiling fans are installed to operate along with radiant panels for better circulation of indoor air. Based on various building control layers, we got these optimum U values. We replicated the model in design builder software for load calculation, which is useful for HVAC design. Customized scheduling has been done based on survey of the selected locations. From the two output profiles, the coincident load is used for centralized HVAC design and non-coincident load is used for radiant parallel sizing. From the graph, it can be seen that the cooling load, is, cooling load values are maximum in the afternoon and night. Thus, to achieve complete grid independency and efficient working of HVAC, we plan to run the chiller at adjusted load, load profile using solar PV only. So, instead of going for localized system for each room, we use a centralized system that will reduce the running cost and facilitate heat, heat recovery. The radiant, the represent used is R134A, which has zero ozone depletion potential, and the COP of whole system is coming out to be 2.9. Radiant panels are placed on individual rooms for providing cooling. These radiant, pan, radiant panels can take both latent and sensible loads, which are specifically designed for warm and humid climate like Mumbai. These panels are developed at heat pump laboratory of IIT Bombay. The panel specifications and number of panels needed in each rooms are shown in the graphic. Now, let's see energy analysis part by Manikanta. Considering HVAC and appliances energy consumption of the cluster, a load profile is plotted for different scenes of a year. Highest consumption is recorded in summer season and lowest in winter season. This is the hourly load profile for a typical day in the month of May. This gives the variation between the energy consumption and energy generation for each month of a year which depicts positive energy cluster. 2.3 megawatt hours of energy is excess generated and is fed to the grid. The energy balance of a cow represents the energy requirement of the cluster is met by the solar PV and battery management system. Utilities like electricity, hot water and AC is to be monitored from the common utility room. PV panels are placed individually on each house and electricity is supplied from the common utility room. We are using REC panels which occupies less space and gives high efficiency. The overall electrical supply system is divided into two subunits. The single line diagram of one of the subunit consists of 25 kW of PV, 50 kW of battery and 25 kW of inverter. Battery is sized such that it should meet the critical loads during grid outage and also the non hvac loads during night hours. A scenario was taken into consideration for shifting the load profile during daytime to the midnight hours when the tariff is minimum by using time of day tariff method. This is the share of energy consumption of appliances for each cluster. With respect to project name Daksh, we built an efficient automation system. With this system, we can control all the appliances and also we developed an application which is used to control the appliances. We are using software socket slayers for secure data transmission. The control strategies are we can schedule the appliances and also we can turn on and turn off the appliances based on the occupancy level set by the user. And also the lighting intensity is varied automatically by the luminous, threshold luminous intensity of the room. These are the electrical and automation plans for the ground floor and the first floor of the 1BHA house. This, this represents the location of wiring and also the sensor node locations. We calculated Hertz index for the cluster system for 
with solar and without solar system. For 1 BHK house, it is 4 and with our energy calculations, we are achieving net positive community. The difference between these two results is because of the nearest location is considered in the simulation system and the heating is considered in the simulator. The life cycle analysis for our project has been carried out considering a single bedroom house for a service life of 50 years. The analysis has been performed by using the software OneClick LCA and a set of manual calculations. The life cycle analysis helps determine the environmental impact of the house right from its cradle to its grave. For our design, factors such as insulation and vapor barriers, though have increased the upfront environmental impact, have nonetheless greatly reduced the operational impact of our design. Now, besides all the technicalities of the project that have been covered so far, one yet important question that remains unanswered is, what are the prospects and likelihood of adoption of our design in the open market? As to the prospects, we have identified several sites that have the issue of haphazardly developed houses within and outside India, which collectively form our total addressable market. The parity in economic conditions of the local population have also been considered as a crucial factor in identifying the potential sites for our market. Now, why have we selected the artist village of Belapur as our pilot site? This is because the households of the locality are facing several social issues in terms of deteriorating living standards and we believe addressing such issues in addition to offering a sustainable solution to housing would improve the overall likelihood of adoption of our design on the ground level. So how exactly does our design address the above mentioned issues? Well, the design features such as sufficient parking spaces, better road connectivity and elevated plinths collectively address the occupant concerns. On the affordability front, we have considered a cost plus pricing strategy for the design so as to maintain a balance between the operating margin that is available to the companies and the affordability to the target occupants. The per square feet cost for our design for both houses with and without amenities are much lower than similar properties in Mumbai and the United States, wherein the materials that we have used such as GFRC panels, UPVC windows and FRP doors have made our design cost effective. Besides the upfront pricing, the design is also much less resource intensive than conventional designs when viewed over a horizon of 50 years. Now moving on to the supply side of the market. The construction companies face a completely different set of concerns. Though the housing market is recovering from its decline due to COVID-19 pandemic, companies are now looking at increasing levels of inventory and a declining tendency to undertake leveraging. As a result of these two parameters, the companies are now preferring to undertake smaller projects that have lower cycle times. And this is precisely what we intend to offer. The design also seeks to add value to the construction companies by offering a high revenue potential, incorporating market-ready materials for construction and providing sufficient leeway for the companies to set a comfortable operating margin. So in summary, our design is holistically geared towards addressing the concerns of all stakeholders in the open market, thereby being an attractive yet effective solution to housing architecture. With that as a whole, I would like to end this presentation. Before that, let's see the house of this person. We have considered all his pain points while designing this 3 BHK house and also ensured that the house price lies within the affordability range of his income level. And the location of the rooms were part of passive architecture. The choice of materials and automation helped us in achieving the net positive energy on cluster level. Also, all the future aspects were considered in order to make sure that this cluster can be extended on community level. Finally, these are the renders showing the cluster, DIY concept and interiors of the house. For any queries, catch us live on April 17th. Namaste.